right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Good evening, everyone, and welcome inside the Fan Cave. Bob Pompiani with you until 11 o'clock, along with Chris Muller up at 93.7 The Fan. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, and we invite you to call us at 412-575-2600. A lot to get into. Chris is up at, at The Fan, uh, the PM team busy today. And isn't it funny, on the week we have a quarterback controversy, we also may have a <laughs> goalie controversy tonight, Chris, because Tristan Jari, who has been yanked in four of his last ten starts, didn't last long today, gave up shots on his first two goals, or shots that he faced, and then uh, three goals allowed on five shots, and then Joel Blomquist came in and did a pretty good job in relief. So uh, if you like controversies at key positions, you got them this week here in Pittsburgh. Tristan Jari should be stapled to the bench for the foreseeable future. You can't play him. Uh, I don't even think there's a controversy. You cannot play this guy. Uh, you might have to carry three goaltenders. Teams typically do not do that. You can't send Blomquist down right now. Uh, he won that game for the Penguins. They were still leaky defensively in front of him the way they were in front of Jari. The difference was he, say, he saw a lot of shots. He only gave up two goals. And again, both of them were higher quality goals, I would say, than the ones Jari gave up. You cannot play Tristan Jari. I mean, he's radioactive right now. Um, he does not deserve to play his way out of this. This is not a team that is good enough to let a goalie work through struggles like this. And frankly, Bob, these aren't just isolated incidents here. This isn't a bad little stretch of play. This guy has been rancid for a while now, uh, and it's a horrible contract. I think it's the worst contract in Pittsburgh sports, which is saying something because maybe one of the three worst is also on that team, Ryan Graves. Uh, but this guy is, is just terrible. It was a huge mistake to extend him. And I think they saw that borne out in a game like tonight where a young guy with a very, you know, minimal track record plays the position far better. But to your point, though, this is this is the kind of stuff now they got to, you know, they've invested heavily in Jari. I don't believe they're just going to uh, discard him. There's not much you can do. You have to make sure he somehow gets it together. How they do that, I'll be interested to well, see because it cannot be playing here every day right now. He just can't be. Well, I mean, you say they have to get it together, but that feels like the sunk cost fallacy here. Well, we spent this money. We've got to try to make it work. I mean, I'll just use this cross-sport example. If we were in Cleveland, would you be advocating that the Cleveland Browns keep trotting Deshaun Watson out there because they gave him all that money? No, or would you say, no, nah, put I him think, on the bench and I put a more Jari capable guy in? has shown me some recent stuff over the years where he could put together solid stretches of games. I think he's, okay, he has a confidence problem. And, and somehow, some way, they've got to get him back on track. Because I don't think they're Deshaun just Watson say, was once okay, but Deshaun Watson was once a top five quarterback, and then after that time was two away, years ago. it's clear that, that he's was way ne- before he got to Cleveland. I know, but okay, so the Tristan Jari that like can carry a team and actually look confident feels like he was here five years ago. You know what I mean? Like I, I just I'm sick and tired of trying to make excuses for Tristan Jari or wondering when he'll come around. Maybe it's just a bad contract that they gave to a player who doesn't nearly deserve it, and if they keep trotting him out there, it's going to do more harm than well, good. Well, I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is I don't think they're going to discard him. I think they've got to figure out a way because this was Mike Sullivan's choice, I think, and it was Dubas who had – that's Whew. his first move he made. He's the guy who signed him, but I think he did so after consulting with uh, Sullivan. So – Somehow, some way, this has got to change because I don't see them moving on from him, mostly because what are you going to do with him? Who's going to want him at this point? Although somebody what might because he's young enough still to turn it around. Uh, it's, it's a tough situation. Bob, what did, what did Kenny Rogers sing in The Gambler? You got to know when to hold him. And in the case of Tristan uh, Jari, know when to fold him. Know when to walk away. Know when to run right, away fine. from this guy. You can do that. But I, I still think they won't do that because there's too much time left and they got to figure him out. And, and I think sometimes you have to go through these situations. He's been through a lot of them. Uh, he's got to get it right. I don't know how they do it. That's the question. What do you do with him at this point? We got to take a break. We'll hear your calls coming up. It's 412 575 2600. You're watching and listening to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call on KDK Plus and 93.7 The Fan. All right, welcome back. This is our GMC Sierra tweet of the night from Penguins PR. 
Jen Bellano puts this out. Evgeny Malkin becomes the 48th player in NHL history to score 500 career goals and just the 20th to do so with a single team. And you have two of them on the same team here. The other two active guys, I believe, are Ovechkin and Stamkos. And that's pretty much it. There's some other guys getting closer. Maybe Patrick <laughs> Kane can get there, although he's still about 29 or 30 goals away. So it's a, it's a pretty special achievement here for a guy who wasn't even voted in the top 100 players in the NHL right. a couple of years ago. I'd hate to see what like player 25 looks like if player 101 has 500 career goals. Uh, I would just say as an appreciation sort of thing, Crosby hit 1,600 points. Malkin's just over 1,300. They're probably going to get to 3,000 career combined points together this season if they both stay healthy. Most, in fact, every fan base in the NHL would consider themselves lucky to have had one of those guys play for their team for as long as they have. Penguins fans have gotten to watch both of them on the heels of getting to watch the best years of Yager's career, on the heels of watching Mario Lemieux. I mean, it really him, is Ron driven Francis. home. Yeah, so many. It, it, right. I mean, Latang's really good. Coffee played here for a great run. We have had a true embarrassment of riches with that franchise, and as mad as I get at them sometimes, like, I don't know, five minutes ago uh, about Tristan Jari, it's good to remind yourself that this is a spoiled, spoiled, charmed hockey town. Dave in the north side is going to be our first caller tonight. Dave, what's going on? I think on? it's time for it's time for Jory to go because last year we give him the message. Last year he only played one out of the last eleven games. Last year, it's actually time thirteen. To get rid you're of, right. They should have got rid of him beginning of the year, Bob. Well, I mean, again, they're not going to do it because they have the money invested, and I understand what Chris is saying, but I also know. That that's a franchise that's just not going to discard with that kind of money. They got to figure out something. You know, I've seen goalies go through a lot of this, and there have been times in Pittsburgh where Mark Andre Fleury, uh, I've sat here, Chris, I'm sure you have in your studio, have taken calls from people who wanted to go away from Mark Andre Fleury, and there were times then about three years later they wanted to have him back. Goalies go through a lot of ups and downs. He's gone through a whole bunch more downs than ups, but because they did that, I, I got to believe they're still going to figure out. I don't know what it would take, honestly. Yeah, they they tied themselves. They tied a cinder block to their own leg with him. And the difference between he and Mark Andre Fleury, because I vividly remember in 2013 infuriating Joe Starkey by saying that Vokun was the key to their first round series that year against the Islanders, which he ended up being. Uh, Fleury at that point though had won a Stanley Cup, had taken them to another Stanley Cup final the year before that, and been arguably their best player in that Cup final. Like he had established a reputation. He had gone sideways the yeah. next couple of playoff no series, question. especially against Philly, but. Jari has none of that. Like, there literally is, there's nothing on Jari's resume. The one time, the one time he looked like he was coming into his own, he gets hurt, they have to pull him out of that Rangers series, then he comes back in game seven and he's playing okay, but then it gets away from him. I just think it's very fair to wonder whether this guy's ever going to get it. I don't think he will. If Matt Murray could have it go bad on him after a pair of Stanley Cups, Tristan Jari certainly could have it go very bad and stay very bad. Yeah, I know. But Ottawa ended up giving up uh, a lot of money to Murray five years, $25 million, and that's something they were – I mean, it is what it is. You, these, these contracts are given out. Your expectations are high for them. And if they don't work out, then you got problems on your hands. And I think um, in this case right now, the Penguins have a problem. they got to figure out what to do with it. Let's go to Andrew in Pittsburgh, who joins us right now on the hotline. What's up, Andrew? Hey, Bob. Hi. I think it's pretty obvious Russ doesn't have a future with this team. So why wreck Fields, you know, confidence when he has a chance that to lead this team, you know? He's gone four and two. He's making plays. He's using his feet. And I don't think Wilson can do that. So I don't know well, that's, why you Andrew, would... that's my only concern about this decision is that you're coming in to a, a game where you have three very inexperienced offensive linemen and Broderick Jones who's been up and down and Dan uh, Moore who's gone more down and up of late. It's not the best of circumstances there but I somehow you know there's a reason Chris that Mike Tomlin never took Russell Wilson off the QB one chart on the depth chart. He never did and I think this was their plan coming in and they're in their own way sticking to their plan. Now I think people want to see what he can do and you know, maybe maybe he, there is a different level. I know pass-wise there has to be a different level because the passing game on Justin Fields, although the one game I did see with Indianapolis where he was asked to do uh, a lot in a comeback effort, he did. He passed that test. So we'll see. It's very intriguing. 
I think Mike Tomlin deserves zero benefit of the doubt whatsoever when it comes to making the right decision at the quarterback position because when he took over the job, there was no decision. It was Roethlisberger's job. Since Roethlisberger has been done, it has been a rotating cast of characters who have either failed outright or, in the case of a guy like Mason Rudolph, been buried at third on the depth chart, played three of the best games you'll see a Steelers quarterback play post Roethlisberger, and then promptly get shipped off, not shipped off, but you know, no efforts made to retain the guy. Uh, I don't think Fields has, is coming off a particularly good game through the air, uh, but Russell Wilson had better play at a near Pro Bowl or All Pro level, like a top 10 in the league type of quarterback to validate this decision because everyone else's critiques of it and worries about it, his lack of foot speed relative to Fields, their offensive line, the fact that they just don't have a very refined passing offense, all valid concerns. He better make them look like a million bucks or Mike Tomlin's going to have egg on his face and deservedly so. And the Penguins still, or the uh, Steelers still need another wide receiver, I think, at some point here. But the, the two that you know were most available, Adams and Cooper, are now gone. I think that Adams will give them a jolt here this Sunday. But I also think that in the long term, Amari Cooper, what he would offer for Buffalo is going to make, mostly because they have Josh Allen, a quarterback, and they have Keon Coleman, who's a young kid getting better. Shakir's good. They have two of the best tight ends in the game and a good backfield. I think the weapons for Buffalo will give them a big advantage, uh, even without Adams, but instead with Cooper. If Cooper's right, he makes the Bills a viable contender. Stop me if you've heard this one before, to dethroning the Chiefs and battling with the Ravens as Team 1A. Uh, I think Cooper, when he's healthy, is as slick a route runner as it gets he gets open better than just about anybody he does have some drop issues but you combine his instincts his his just pedigree and polish at the position with what Allen is capable of doing I think you've got a very very scary mixture I wouldn't be surprised on the other hand if the Jets situation just completely blows up because it is very obvious right now that they are fully beholden as a franchise to the whims of Aaron Rodgers yeah. And I wouldn't be feeling all that good about betting on something like a 40-year-old quarterback playing well all year. Uh, and one who's lost his mobility as well. Let's go to Keith in West Mifflin. Keith, how you doing tonight? Yeah, good. Yeah, good evening. Uh, uh, the jury is good as gone, but I would call to talk about uh, Carlson on defense. The last year disappointment. This year starting in disappointment. Uh, two goals tonight. One with the uh, first goaltender, then he was pulled, and second, uh, liability uh, on defense is... Uh, and he's throwing a puck around a lot, but he's not the only one. All their players somehow, some way, revert back to what they've done a lot of in their careers. That is get very loosey-goosey with the puck. And to that, we have a tweet here. This is from Kevin D., who hits both of us up here, and he says, when Jari plays the Penguins defense, there are more odd man rushes than a furry convention. Uh, Jari is probably more than a little shell-shocked. He is, but they also play that way in front of Bloomquist tonight. He had three breakaways, and he came right in, Chris, and made the saves and kept them in the game at 3-1. It could have been 5-1. to one. I thought Bloomquist's play was a total indictment of Jari because you're right. They played exactly the same loosey-goosey style. The chances were even better against Bloomquist for the majority of the game, and he held the fort. Uh, it's, it's all on Jari. And by the way, if Carlson, if Eric Carlson puts up like 75 to 80 points, truly no one cares what he does on defense uh, within reason because he would have that power play humming. I mean, that's why you brought him here. That's really the reason he's won Norris trophies is because he's a control-the-game type of player. Uh, but I will concede he still looks like a far cry from that guy with this team. Yeah, but they did have two power play goals tonight, and it's been better to start this season than it was at the end of last. we got to take a break here, Chris. Come back with more. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, KDK Plus and 93.7 The Fan. KDK News at 11 starts in about six minutes. Josh Taylor standing by at the anchor desk. JT. Good evening, Bob. Tonight, a transgender woman finally gets justice three years after her murder, plus a massive fire sends three firefighters to the hospital, and the presidential candidates face contentious questions on the campaign trail. It's all coming up at 11. See you then. All right. Thank you very much, Josh. Appreciate that. In the meantime, uh, I get the feeling here that Zach Frazier is going to be out. He should be out until through the break, the bye week that comes up. Um, he just... You know, saw him yesterday he's in that boot and, and, and on a, a little uh, a wheel that gets him off the pressure. 
I, they say week to week. I know he wants to play, Chris, but for now, I don't think they have a choice here. If you rush him back, you could hurt it even more, and I'm not sure what Ryan McCollum can do long term. The prudent thing is to try to roll the dice that you can beat the Jets, and then you better beat the Giants, who I think are back to being terrible, uh, and then you'd get functionally three weeks off for Zach Frazier. That's best case and maybe the only realistic scenario. Otherwise, I agree. Rush it back. You heard him, Bob. Yeah. All right, that's going to do it, Chris. Thank you very much, and we thank all of you for watching tonight. We'll have all the latest highlights of the Penguins' big win tonight at 11 on KDK. Good night.